Hey folks, it's Nate. Thanks for joining me once again as we look to the horizon. I am back with your weekly writing update, and I hope you are enjoying the new content coming out on the blog. I see a lot of you over there visiting on a week-to-week -week basis, and I'm glad for all the new people who are showing up to take a look at what I'm doing. Um, this week has been pretty productive for me on things that are largely behind the scenes. Uh, I've been doing a lot of corresponding with um, beta readers and stuff like that. I recently got a new set of chapters to look at from someone I am a beta reader for, so I've been working my way through that and trying to refresh my memory on um, some of the stuff he sent me previously because it's been several months since I've heard from him. That happens sometimes. This is one of the reasons why I like to have a finished, complete product before I send it to someone for beta reading. It is a lot of work to drop on someone at once, but I think you get better results because people can just sort of go through it all at once as if they were actually reading the story. Um, so that I'm, I'm working on that. Um, it has been a little bit more going back and catching up than I would like. Um, I've had a couple of new ideas um, for nonfiction posts to put on the blog. Uh, those are going to be coming in the not too distant future. Um, I don't think I want to tack them just on the end of what I've written. I want to kind of work them in with some related subjects. Um, so I haven't actually sat down and worked on any of those, but um, they're, they're on the list, let's say. They're on the list of things to do. Um, so things I have been doing a lot of this week, I've been working on the outline for A Candle in the Wind. Um, that outline is now about half done. So I made actually really fast progress on that. Um, usually outlining takes me about three weeks, but that has also assumed that I've been working on other projects um, writing nonstop alongside it, and I really haven't been. So I actually hope to be done with the outlining process in another two or three days. And once that's done, I can begin looking at where I want chapter breaks to be um, about... I, I didn't used to be able to do this, but now I think I can um, definitively say um, where, where chapter breaks can be um, because I have a, a pretty solid grasp, I think, on how many words are going to go into each point on my outline now. I've been doing this long enough um, that I feel confident in saying chapter breaks will be right about there, right? Um, and I've also been looking at um, what I'm calling Hunger's Dirge or Hunger's Requiem. I haven't, I haven't actually put a title on it. Um, but one of the, the primary plot points in A Candle in the Wind is that there is a, a certain number of folk heroes in the story, and there's a song about them. Um, and it's uh, a song about um, an event in Roy Harper's life known as the Summer of Snow, when um, incarnations of famine came down and terrorized the prairies, and Roy Harper had to go out and destroy them because, you know, that's kind of what he does. He, he fights monsters and catches uh, evil wizards, basically, right? Um, in, in the Old West with magic. You know, that's the that's the shtick. That's his shtick, right? And uh, he's kind of a folk hero and kind of embarrassed by that fact. Um, I, I want the, to have this folk song about these folk heroes, Roy Harper and some of the other people he's met, um, doing this thing that leaves them all very embarrassed. So I'm, I'm trying to put this song together and have it be authentic to the time period. Also a little bit cringy, you know? Um, maybe it, it does tell an important story about people who did something important, but it's also something that kind of embarrasses them. So that's a delicate balance to walk right off the bat. And I'm not the world's greatest poet either. Um, so I, I have written a couple of stanzas for it. I don't like any of them. I'm probably going to revise them all a lot. I know poets wind up revising their work a lot. So hopefully, um, I'll be in good company there. Uh, so I, I'm working on that. It is another fun little adventure. Um, I try and do something that stretches me as a writer in every story I write. And for this one, it will be uh, probably this this folk song thing that we'll, we'll see. I'll, I'll keep bringing you updates on that front um, as with all my other stuff. Um, let's see, other writing projects I am working on. Um, I have the outline for Savior in the Sewers on the back burner right now, so I'm not actually working on that. Oh, I, I am working on a short for Iron Age Media. Um, the prompt for this week, 
I guess last week by the time this goes up, um, was called the Observer, which was a very interesting looking bathosphere in space kind of thing. And uh, I have a fun approach for storytelling that I want to do in that. Um, I've always enjoyed um, found document fiction, things like Dracula as a, as a found document novel, the first probably found document novel. Um, and there are, there are other great examples of it. The huge one in the modern era is the SCP files. If you're familiar with those, that's a very found documents kind of a adventure um, right there. So I'm thinking of doing something like that. It's very exciting, but it also forces me to be very efficient because you only get 5,000 words tops for an Iron Age media submission. Um, so I'm thinking about that. And of course, one of my writing goals is to win the popular vote in at least one of Iron Age media's weekly story contests. So got to get cracking on that. But in the meantime, um, that's, that's what I'm doing this week. Let me know what you think down in the comments below. There's a like button and a subscribe button down there. You can use those as you see fit. And I'll talk to you later.